it back, but it's more than basic. Cause a portion of his rap at the core is ancient. It's supported like a pack of some warm observations. Are important like the fact that we're bored of things. Shit. More creative have the floor, so take it. Travel to the core is a normal place. Greetings, friends. It's been a while. I have not fallen off the planet or uh, forgotten about you guys or have uh, renounced my love for you. In fact, my love for you has increased dramatically. I am uh, talking to you today because this will be the uh, final episode of the first season of Tattooed with Children, which is worth listening to, Tattooed with Children. I am your host, Flavor Ray, in seat A, across from me in seat B is the Dread Pirate Benjamin, and across from us both, after a uh, long hiatus, he's, actually this is a guest spot uh, over in seat C with uh, CIO No Pain, and this is actually, believe it or not, this is hard for me to believe because it's been so long, but this is the first episode of Tattoo with Children where we're going to have an engineered by who the one who was known as Producer Megan. She's now known as Megamix. So this is Megamix, my producer. It will be doing the production. She is, to her complete chagrin, not on the actual mic. <laughs> The look on her face is so beautiful right now. I'm angry, <laughs> but she, but she absolutely will be uh, the third seat in season two. Guys, it's been a while. Are you rusty? Very, very rusty. Extraordinarily, Mike. I'm honestly, I'm considering just switching you out right now. Just like I'm that. super rusty because I've not just not been on this one. I've not been on any one. Are you even close to your mic? Like, I'm not even hearing you. Yeah, no, I'm tall and I'm a tall seat, so we're, I have we're to gonna have, we're gonna have to raise we have to raise that mic or something. Or get you a, get you a smaller. Chair. Not really sure. We're doing fine. We're doing fine. We're all fine here. We're all fine here, uh, guys. I know what you want to know. All right, <clears throat> what you want to know is you actually you want to know a lot of things today. Well, now I feel like I'm at the kids' table. <laughs> well, good. Because <That's, laughs> you are. Hey that's guys, what, that's what's necessary for you. What you want to know is uh, where have I been and why have I been there? Okay, listen, the reason why uh, we uh, laid off the corners of Tattoo with Children was because I realized when I compared uh, Tattoo with Children to other podcasts that we had actually recorded about four seasons of uh, Tattoo with Children continuously, which was a bit much, I think, for a, for a lot of people. And so I thought it would be a good time to just stop and, and just assess what, what we were doing and decide how I want to go forward, and I decided that uh, the podcast needed more focus. Okay, okay, okay more focus. And so uh, it needed more focus, in, in, and uh, it needed uh, a little bit of a retool. You know, we needed to switch producers. We needed to switch our equipment. We had things they wanted to add in that were difficult to add in while recording, and so we we just took stock and backed off so that we could do things right. So we can have something that is of uh, great quality. And that's all I've been working on. I've been working on uh, getting things uh, ship shape for you guys. And there's going to be a few uh, changes that I hope you notice. Like I, like, I don't want it to be like a seamless transition. I want it to be like a thing where you're like, oh, this podcast actually got better. And so uh, we'll be adding in video. We will be having uh, consistent themes throughout an episode which is uh, one of the things that we attempted to do in a very half-assed manner in season one and never quite got there. There will be a lot more of, uh, of Benny making me crack up. You know, we're we're going we're gonna to concentrate on being positive uh, between the two of us, me and Ben. Like, so, I, so like in other words, like, I didn't fire him like you guys suggested. I, right. I refuse to do that. Uh, but, right. I, I, but yes, he, he's, he's going to keep uh, podcasting on Tattoo of Children. We're just going to be more positive about it. Yeah, consistently. So when I say like your mom's more positive about it, yeah, it, it'll it, it, it'll be a good thing. Okay, All instead right. of instead of him actually insulting my mother, I'm down. Uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a crazy little bit. You know, we've uh, we've we've had a lot of other things come up. We've had a lot of questions from our friends and our neighbors and yes. our listeners about why we're gone. Uh, another one of the reasons we're gone is because of CIO pain. He yeah. he has. Uh, he has directed us and tasked us uh, with doing other things. Uh, yeah, and- like guys, you, you got to understand something about the three of us. Uh, CAO No Pain is actually uh, our boss. Yeah. As far as, yeah. you know, 
how this thing is paid for. Right. Like I like I, I'm in charge of this of this podcast, but I actually right. work on another podcast. Right. You know, uh, if you guys have not heard Pain Points of Ventures, go ahead and give that a listen. I'm I'm on that every week. Yep. Uh, but having him, you know, say, guys, we needed to do X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. Like, I really wanted to do X, Y, and Z, but I also wanted to uh, do Tattoo with Children the right way at the same time. Sure. And there was no way of doing both those things at the same time uh, and record. Well, we just have to get more efficient use of our time because, you know, this is a great concept and it's a great idea and we absolutely are going to do season two. I love the fact that, for instance, we we actually have like 12 seasons if you go by normal podcast rules. Yeah, I'm trying. Like I, I said four, trying to like, you know, yeah. not sound as assholey as I actually was. Right. But I like the fact that ours has what, like 65? Yeah. Like our season one. Like, at some point, I hope history looks back at us and there's like, well, there's podcast seasons and then there's Tattooed with Children. <laughs> I like, really over, I hope we broke a record. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> clearly over, over delivering. So why on earth did they keep talking? Right. It's like it's like Naruto style seasoning. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. We just every episode we go back and rehash the last episode for 45 goddamn minutes. Right. I was, I'm watching Naruto with my daughter right now. Yeah. And, uh, we were like, you know, at a certain point, it's like, okay, this, this is a good stopping point. And I like looked at the episode list. It was like season three. Right. Like how, what on earth? Yeah. Well, Mike texted me last night. He was on the last episode. The very last. Oh yeah. 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 He was crying into his wine. Or yeah. Whatever it is he does. You will weep heavily. If you, if you go through the entire season, like guys, if you haven't listened, uh, listened to, you haven't watched uh, Naruto, uh, the anime, go ahead and do that. Even if you've already read it. Yeah, no, Watch absolutely. Anime. It's it's fantastic. It's uh and we've got you know, you mentioned Pain Points of Interest, uh, which is a great podcast to follow. It is. We uh we've got and then we have our neighbor podcast, of course, uh Going Dutch uh-huh. with Marky and Beck. Yep. Uh and those ladies are just like they're just like steady and slow wins the race. Yeah. But it's like steady and extremely funny wins it is the race. So good. Like I listened to like three minutes of that the other day, and I, I again I literally had to pull over to the side of the road because I was driving like I was drunk. Right. I haven't had anything to drink this year. You it's know, really weird how I can't get through one of their podcasts. Yeah, because I just keep laughing. Right. No. It's a, like, yeah, I I listen to like three minutes of it and I'm dying, and I'm like, I'll go back and finish that, and then I don't. And then it doesn't. It doesn't happen. But but, but I but I I do uh, I I do think that uh, we're in the, we're going the right direction. Yeah. Is my is my point? It's yeah. Like you know, guys. Like a lot of times, like things will drop out. You know, like a podcast been going well, and then it'll stop uh, releasing. And you're like, well, that was fun. I guess they got tired of it or, you know, no, life happened. we didn't get tired of it. Yeah, we didn't get tired of it. Life didn't happen. Uh, it's just <clears throat> the nature of the work and how we go about it. Right. Uh, just kind of led to it happening that way. But I w- definitely wanted to, uh, get in touch with you guys. And we're definitely gonna, <clears throat> we're definitely gonna start a few more podcasts. There's, there's yeah. a couple coming down the way. Uh, I don't know that what are, you want to talk about. You want to talk about it? No, I don't want to talk about it indirectly. I just want, okay. want to kind of plant the seed uh, that CIO Pain has, in fact, tasked tasked us with uh, trying a few more things. Yeah. And so the creative team here at Pain Points is gonna um, we're we're gonna jump on some new ideas real quick. It's yeah. gonna be, it's gonna yep. be really exciting. That's me. <laughs> Mega Mix is is going to be producing all of this, <laughs> and from from my standpoint now, like this is the only thing that I do. Like the the whole day job I had all through the first season, like I don't I don't do that anymore. It's really difficult to have a day job anyway. It is. I don't like them. Well, it's it's the thing where I was like, okay, I do the thing that I love, and then I do this. Right. Like, I left mine got, so I could tell people like you what to do. Right. Exactly. Which I'm 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 fine with because. Yeah, you, you you got the money. <laughs> if you uh, if you want to be a part of the creative team at Pain Points or uh, be on a podcast, send a message to Madara Shadow on Instagram or Hunter Vanguard, and he will weed through the resumes and yes. find the next person that should join us in our endeavor I to no, fill the world with our voices. I have no problem with. Going through a thousand of these uh, messages, looking for the diamond in the rough. So, yeah, guys, absolutely. if you have an idea, if you have a, if you yeah. if you think you just have a good radio voice, right, and you want to come on here and uh, and and test out your skills or yeah. sharpen your skills, 
go ahead and give me a give, drop me a line and I'll see what I can yeah. do for you, man. I like I, also, I'm real easy. Another good thing to do is send Ray some messages on how sexy my voice is. Uh, because that really like lifts him up and like brings him to a very like positive place in his life when he realizes that I could literally read the goddamn encyclopedia. <laughs> Listen, These are all bad ideas. <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to tell you not to send me messages by 87. <laughs> I will say messages regarding the sexiness of Pirate Ben's voice will be read and put in their proper place. <laughs> <laughs> now that place could be on a board that says, "Hey Ben, just present a nice thing about you," <laughs> or it could be the underside of a toilet seat that no one's ever going to see. <laughs> we call that board Ben's ego board. So uh, there's that Ben's uh, ego board. Ben's ego board, like other things, is massive. And uh, <laughs> like other. <laughs> Do we want, like, do we want to tell our audience? That one. Do we want to tell our audience about our new our new term? Right? The, oh what, God! The one we just came up with said so, the, 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 whenever we move, we're going to move quick. <laughs> right. So, so we're do, we're talking about doing a recording today, like just out of the blue, right? Right. And, and I'm yeah. talking to our 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 CPO, our organizational lead, about it, and he's like, "Well, we probably need to do something like this by Wednesday at the very latest." And I'm right. like, "No, you don't understand. When creative says we move quick, right?" right? We're gonna we're gonna be swinging our our move quick dick and right. and and Ray just over there shaking his head like yep. move quick that's our new right. thing that's, that's our, our that's, that's our new creative thing. That's our has new a thing. giant move quick dick right yeah it's, it's it's a it's a it's a big long thick one and we're gonna put so, on t shirts you can buy later so <laughs> you're saying so when our operations guy listens to this so so what you're saying uh, is that we shouldn't have already recorded that episode and sent it to you. Which episode? But no, I'm just saying that's the oh. thing about operations is they're yeah. always like, "Hey, you should do this," and creatives like, "Yeah, I emailed that to I, you this I morning." Did, <laughs> did that already. <laughs> operations is like, "Hold on, hold on, we don't have a plan for it yet." Well, it's too late for that shit because we done done it. So now you're hearing why I wanted to actually stop this, the recording. Because if I had stopped recording, I'd be like, "All right, we're gonna do season two and then ninety episodes later. Hey, Megamix, when you raise your hand, does that mean you're calling for a break? No. I. This is the season finale, right? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Do you guys want to know your analytics? Uh, do we want to know our analytics? We should have a retrospective on the episode. Okay, That's sure. great. Yeah, okay. this, this is a good benchmark. What, All right. are, what Megamix. are our analytics? Mike, get, off the, get out of the way. No, you're great. Um, this is It's like a Joe Rogan. Doesn't, doesn't the podcast producer in Joe Rogan sound something like this? Kind of wild like, and wacky. Kind of like away, away from the Okay, microphone. yeah. Yeah, okay, right. so... Uh, all right. Our episode breakdown, we don't care about that. By the way, no. you guys have lost, like, a ton of listeners. Well, yeah. Uh, it's gotten worse. I haven't, I haven't released. Well, has it been just recently? Because we haven't been recording. That, yeah, that's it. Okay. okay so, uh, interesting. The, the thing that I found most interesting was the worldwide listener locations. Yeah. Uh, 91.16% of our listeners come from the United States. Okay. USA. That's, that's good USA. to know. USA. Uh, four point nine five of our listeners come from Canada. Love you, Canada. One percent comes Canada. from France. Fucking Love you, frogs. Then we have <laughs> a very small percentage from the United Kingdom, Spain, Nigeria, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Tunisia. I would Tunisia, I would, Germany, and Australia. Where is Anything, tu, where is Tunisia? At? It's in North Africa. Anything in Africa, I'm full. I claim responsibility for it, not because I'm black. But because I've gotten onto Twitter and mm-hmm. I just w- started following tons of of, of your, your Robo accounts, like okay. anybody else from Africa, I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna, we're all gonna talk." And they fucking love what I say on Twitter. So, so I'm never gonna them. speak to the Canadians again, but I will, in fact, yeah. speak to Tunisia. You'll speak to Tunisia. You'll speak to Nigeria. Right. Like, I'm, I want to. I really hope I get some uh, Ghana love. Yeah, we don't I have love. any yet. We don't some, have any yet. Some Ghana love, some, really? Yes. Some, oh. I meant it. I, I said what I fucking meant. Ghana I love. I want some Ghana love. Our listener trends, we've yeah. had uh, 1,631 downloads, which means 1,631 listens since the beginning of this podcast. Okay, that's okay. dope. That's pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm good with that. And most of our listens come from Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Okay. I didn't know I had any Apple listeners. So, uh, yeah. All right. Thanks. Uh, 
thanks to uh, uh, Apple, uh, uh, you guys are on iPhones. You're a little pretentious, but I still love you. So we have uh, we have roughly 15 downloads per episode. Okay. We have 67 episodes. This will be 68. <gasps> We're not ending on 69. That's on purpose. That is definitely on purpose. Yeah, because Mike wait, we're, ending, we're ending on 68. So season two opens up on opens a six up nine. Oh no! All right, I'm going back over season, here. Season, season two, and Mega Mix checks one. out. <laughs> <laughs> you see, this is see, this is the great thing about season two. You're gonna you're gonna hear more of Ben interacting directly with his oldest child. And yeah, that it's is, gonna be a it's gonna be an interesting interaction because I don't think she's ever. Uh, interacted with like full on away from the house not dad yeah you know her dad is a little bit disturbing away from the house so she's gonna find out like the same as, same as my kids my, my kids don't hear they don't listen to this podcast they, they don't hear this side of me and it's not as if this is a un you know an untrue side of me but it's just something like you know i don't talk to my kids about my uh, move quick dick it's just right you know, it's, yeah it's not no there are things you definitely don't take home i mean you can't it would be the unhinging of the the it would be the unhinging of the foundation yeah that you have placed on your your happy home life exactly yeah. because like my like dude my kids are on the internet constantly like right. i keep my three-year-old off of the generalized youtube i like stick, yeah i try to keep her on youtube kids yeah but i've discovered that she's discovered how to get to youtube regardless yeah. right like i have no idea she does not know how to spell but for right. some reason she can open up a browser and find youtube that's the, the society that we live in right it is so i've started something completely different uh since we last recorded oh yeah uh i am uh 110 percent into baseball cards again yeah that but there's that, a reason for it well there's a reason for it but uh ray you actually haven't heard this story i okay. uh I uh, was having a pretty shit Friday night. Uh, we, we had a bunch of cancellations, and it was super weird. It was like the the Black Plague or something had occurred, and the the, that. the shop was just super slow. Well, it's the Roaring Twenties. That's what al- always happens in the Roaring Twenties. Right. Um, so anyway, I went to uh, I went to Target and bought a bunch of a uh, bunch of packs of baseball cards. Uh huh. And I took two of them into Standpipe, and I was just gonna like open them as I uh, got my coffee. So, uh-huh. so I ordered my coffee, and then I go to sit down at the bar, and there's an elderly gentleman sitting there, and he looks probably like he's sixty years old. Uh, turns out he was a little older than that. Uh, he's aged well. Okay. And uh, I said, "Hey, do you mind if I take this seat?" And he's like, "If you can." And I knew it was going to be a good conversation, right? You know. And so I sit down and I pull out my baseball card, and and I and I just I'm focused on opening the pack, right? And it's the 2019 Tops Update Pack. Okay. And so I'm like, I'm opening it very carefully, you know, because I don't want to damage any of the goods, right? Just in and, case you got something interesting important. Yeah. And I look over at him, like I kind of cock my head over to the side, and I look over at him, and he, the look on his face is like he's just gone down a wormhole. <laughs> You know, like the G's are forcing him back into his seat, you know. Right, right. And I'm like, how long's it been since you did this, buddy? And he goes, he looks me dead in the eyes and goes, April of 1963. Jeez. And I'm like, I look at him and I'm like, holy shit, you didn't. And he goes, I did. And I went, you threw away a million dollars worth of baseball cards, didn't you? And he goes, yes, sir, I did. There you go. <laughs> He's like, I cannot tell you how many ma- I could have retired off of any one of those cards that I threw away. Yeah. So uh we had a great conversation though. He actually served in Vietnam. Okay. And uh came back, put himself through school. He's from the Beaumont Port Arthur area. Okay. And uh he laughed his ass off when he found out that my dad was Mr. Coons High School. Oh, right. And because uh, he knew about Coons, he's like, and, well, because I opened with uh, my my pops was from Honey Island. And he's like, you know, there's only about three people that can say that. And I'm like, oh, I know. And I know <laughs> the other two guys that are from Honey Island, too. Anyway, uh, so we had a we had a really good conversation. You know, this guy has a uh, 
he has a really open view of the world as it is. He's very concerned about how quickly it's changing. Okay. He's very and 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 the reason but the reason for that though is his grandchildren. Mm-hmm. He's not quite sure what to tell them. What, which makes perfect sense. And the thing that I brought him back to, because he talked about putting himself through college uh-huh. with the GI Bill. Mm-hmm. He talked about the negativity of Vietnam when he came back. He mm-hmm. talked about the fact, uh, you know, which your dad knows. He, he does. He talked, about, uh, he talked about the fact that he worked two jobs, you know. And I kind of giggled a little bit, and he went, what's that giggle? And I went, well, do you like this place, you know? And he like, this coffee shop? And I'm like, yeah. What do you think of it? And he's like, it's pretty great. Like, r- real diverse. Like, got a good vibe. And I was like, cool, this is mine. And he was like, no way. How- how'd you pull that off? And I was like, two jobs, brother. Yeah. Anybody can do it. We both got here completely different ways. Right. You know, but we both ended up here. And what's the thing that holds us together? He's like, hard work. And I'm like, then that's what you tell Did your you grandkids. Tell your grandkids that, yeah. It doesn't matter that you don't know which direction to send them. You know the foundation. And the foundation is, how hard are you going to work? And I think that's something that is the most positive message of today. Today being March the 9th, 2020. Right. I was like, guys, I know that we're all worried about a lot of different shit right now. Right. Uh, You know, we're freaking out 20 ways from Sunday. The thing about it is, if we keep working hard at it, yeah, we're going to be ready for whatever it is. Right. So I'm not that worried myself. Yeah. Like, just me personally. Right. Like, I understand that there are challenges that other people have that I don't have and I can't understand. Mm-hmm. And I'm cool with that. Because if they're working hard and I'm working hard, then we're going to end up in the same spot, even if we come from different directions. Well, and the fascinating thing, you know, Mike and I were talking about this earlier today, the, the, be- before you pulled up, Ray, the fascinating thing about it is that while there are a lot of challenges, if you're a student of history, uh-huh. which we all are here in different ways, it, the opportunity that's available to us through the things that everyone's worried about right now. Right. It's it's not exactly that you're going to take advantage of it, but hard time presents you with an opportunity to double down on what you really believe in. Exactly. And and that's the thing that I don't think people are seeing. They're getting, you know, the, the idea that you and I have talked about so many times is like life is a river mm-hmm. and it flows one way. And that helps me see it a little bit outside of like this linear concept of a line. Because uh-huh. river, rivers can change. Rivers change. They they different flows. If you have a big rock in the river, it can divert. Right. But right now, it's up on its banks, mm-hmm. and everybody go, is going, oh, God, oh, God, we're all going to die. Okay, you're not. Right. A, climb, you're climb, not going to die. Climb higher. Right. Get, get yourself out of the flow right now and take a look at it. And if you haven't, take a look historically. Look at the read. I I challenge everyone that's listening to this final episode uh, for a little bit here to go look uh, at just a little bit of history. The 1920s were fucking rough. Yeah, that was it was not a great time. Like we think of them as being the roaring 20s. Right. When it was like flappers and everybody had a lot of money and Mm -hmm, so on and so mm -hmm. forth. See, that was only in a certain segment of the population. Right. Like I talked to my grandmother. I remember years ago Mm -hmm. I talked to my grandma when she was alive about the Great Depression. Mm-hmm. And I was like, so yeah, all this happens. Like, like, what was your impression of the Great Depression? So mm-hmm. my impression was uh, the Great Depression was I had no idea what the fuck anybody was talking about. Right. Like I have like to this day, I don't know what the Great Depression was or is. Right. Because it was just another Thursday to me. Right. You know, it was like it had been that way for a long time. And that's what you're feeling in America right now. Yeah. I know. Like, I can't tell. I don't know what they're feeling in China and Japan or whatever. But here in America, like when the stock market goes down, mm-hmm. we don't really think too much hard, too hard yeah, about it. Because it's Thursday. It's Thursday. Yeah. Well, I mean, a big attribute to the Roaring Twenties was the fact that in 1920 they passed prohibition. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. The 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 pictures you see of people all having a good time. Mm-hmm. Guess what they were doing? Right. Drinking illegally. Drinking illegally. Right. 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 And so, I mean, that's ex- talking exactly to your point of. Hard times 
And mm-hmm. you could argue that if you like to have a good time by drinking, that prohibition would put a damper on that, right? Right. right. They create opportunity. Right. Bootleggers. Right. Found the opportunity right. in something right. and took the risk. Well, and the whole flapper fashion. I mean, when I went down the wormhole, it, I, I got into it's the all flappers. Rebellious. It, it was straight rebellion. It yeah. was like, dude, we're depressed as fuck. And okay, we don't care. Let's, let's, uh, let's make something to have a little fun on Friday night. Yeah. How about we, how about we, uh, spice up our dresses a little bit? How about we spice up our hair a little bit? How about, how about we do this different? How about we dance well, different than what well, our parents my, would like? My, 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 my mm-hmm. your, your dad's going to hate that. Well, right. okay, boomer. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like say the, <laughs> so, so there's an opportunity. And then if you go back even further and look at the 1820s, it's not terribly different. Right. You say, well, it's closer to the Victorian era and this and that. Yeah, but you still find the same exact thing. Yep. You, you you find that what Mike said is true. You have people that are facing very difficult circumstances and responding to it with rebellion and creativity. Yes. You know, and so that's the option we all have. I'm not saying, oh, hey, you should feel better today. But I am saying you should focus on positivity. You should focus on the creative interest in a vein that you have. You should be very, very cautious right now about the type of information you take in. I would say, for everyone listening, okay, find three sources of information that you trust Mm -hmm. and no more than three. So if you watch Fox News, then you'd go to Fox News. If mm-hmm. you watch CNN, you go to CNN. If you listen to NPR, then you go to NPR. Mm-hmm. And then find two other sources of information. Mm-hmm. And other than those three sources of information, you don't take in for yourself information from other sources. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that isn't because those sources aren't trusted. It's because you do not need to be constantly hammered from all sides with the same thing right Mm -hmm. so if you get it once take it once and move on right you get it twice in a second time that's fine you get it third then you're going to be you're you're getting real close to it's just like food it's like how much can you eat exactly you know i i mentioned to you guys that i'm re-watching the expanse Right, and I love that TV show. It's a it, great one. It's by an the way. Amazon, uh, Amazon uh, original. Is it original? I believe it is. It is now an Amazon original. The first okay. three okay. seasons were not. The right. fourth season, Amazon Prime took it over. So, awesome. so I fucking love this show. But an interesting thing happens when I watch more than two episodes. You got to get full. I start to get negative. Yeah. I start to get, we can't win this. I start to get in a position where I believe that nothing will help. Right. If you know the story at all, it's about Earth versus Mars. Uh, and then there's a third faction called the Belters, which is in the kind of the, the, the area group. between Mars and Earth. Uh, my point being is that this is a fantastic show. And even though this is a fantastic show... Literally, I get negative about it. And so if I don't pay attention, right, turn it off after two episodes and get a different source of information or just take a break a and de- let it sit. Yeah, just let it sit. Like what I what I say is let it burn. Yeah. I was like, you know, once you've gotten the information that you can use, mm-hmm. burn that for a while. Like I like I tend to like I guess we all tend to, but we here we we tend to take a, a cigarette break mm-hmm. where we go out and smoke for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the purpose of that isn't to get nicotine, although it does help. But the purpose of it is to just give our thoughts a chance to digest, mm-hmm. and we can't really. Uh, if you're smoking, you, you're not taking in something new. Mm-hmm. You're just going, you're recycling. Right, right. Okay, so it's like, give yourself a chance to recycle. Give yourself a chance to reset. And then come back with the next thing that, that, that you can do or next thing that you can think about. The next thing that's good for your spirit. Mm-hmm. See, this is the thing that is, that's really kind of uh, hit a lot of us that we're not talking about. The fact is, guys, we're not intellectually inferior mm-hmm. today you know i hear that a lot like you know the voters are dumber or the mm-hmm. uh you know the the children aren't getting it say like, we're not intellectually inferior we are not in fact lazier than mm-hmm. we've ever been mm-hmm. we're, we're always the same that we've ever been the thing that is lacking in us 
is that we have decided for some reason that a spiritual being, which is us, is a physical being. Mm -hmm. And we have neglected the spiritual in uh, in favor of the physical. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we feel tired when there's no reason to be tired. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so guys, do things that in that ingratiate your spirit. Do like the things that make you happy. Do that thing, right? You know, and, and this be, is what Gary Vee is saying right, all the time. Say, right. guys, if you have great money doing something that you don't like doing, it's horrible money, right? Get rid of that money. That's right. bad money. It's, right. That's that's money that's actually killing you, right? Well, let's let's in in keeping with that, let's take a quick break here, and uh, and then we'll come back and finish that topic because I think you're hitting on something very important. You're back with Tattoo with Children. Uh, I uh, Immediately after we started taking a smoke break, I, uh, Mike stood up, and I saw the fucking stool that we had to sit him on right. to do this recording, and I laughed uproariously. Like that, <laughs> when he said sit at the kids' table, he was, <laughs> it wasn't his height he was talking about, he was talking about his ass. <laughs> the stool he was on was smaller than his ass. I, He's I was, just squatting on the I was a little thing. concerned <laughs> that we would lose the stool seat <laughs> along the way. It was so funny. I'm I'm sorry, Mike. I didn't know that we had done that to you. I so, punished him? I solved my own problem. Mega Mix got her revenge immediately. Yeah. I did. So, uh, anyway, guys, what we're talking about here is I had just hit on the idea that uh we've 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 done i think by accident uh but some by design we have prioritized the things that were physical over the things that actually make us happy mm-hmm. you know instead of doing the things that make us happy we want to buy things that'll make us happy and that has made us unhappy so uh to counteract that i would say let's do things that make us happy the first thing you should do in my opinion is limit your sources of information. We have information glut today, right? We can get all the information that we could possibly want and dramatically more. But when we get them from so so much information from so many different sources, the uh, the uh, uh, tendency to overconsume is overwhelming. Mm. And overconsumption of information is directly uh, di- directly in in uh, conflict with uh, spiritual growth because spiritual growth requires time and reflection and information glut doesn't allow that right so uh, yeah like just as an as an action as a habit you know first thing I would say start is just uh, if you if you want to be if you want to be happier if you're if you're as happy as a clam in, in uh, as, 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 a, as a clam in water a pig and shit right now you know just keep 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 doing you boo you you're you're, you're great you right. know but if you're like me and like a lot of people, a lot of uh, other people that I talk to, and I have a lot of conversations, right? You know, I've got like twenty uh, alerts on my phone right now that I got to get to from conversations I've already started, right? Uh, if you're like all of us, then the first thing you should do is stop listening to everybody mm-hmm. and listen to yourself, right? All right, and well, the only way you're going to do that is by limiting how much information you take in. Yeah, and I think also, you know, there's this idea of getting to success immediately. Um, yeah. For instance, you know that I joined Twitter uh, at the beginning of Tattooed with Children. He did. And I only have about 50 followers. At Black Crow Kage on Twitter is Ben. Right. And the interesting thing about only having a few followers and only following a few people is that I use Twitter as kind of a personal diary. Not in the sense of I put all my negativity down there, but if you if you follow me on social media, you know that I'm probably Instagram one, Facebook two, Twitter three. Right. And uh, I I actually have enjoyed Twitter quite a bit, but I have a much longer uh, goal on Twitter than I do on Instagram or Facebook. Right. So a lot of things that I'll do on Instagram and Facebook, I will not do on Twitter. Because I'm using Twitter as kind of my personal journal to remind myself where I need to be. Right. And I use Instagram and Facebook to get attention immediately. Right. So, but with that, what has happened is, is that a lot of people are, have sent me messages and said, hey, why is your Twitter so small? Because I'm not trying to grow it. Right. Like, I'm, I'm literally not trying to grow it. What I'm trying to do with my Twitter account is I'm simply trying to remind myself what matters most. So I use... Twitter as a reason to be kind. 
Mm-hmm. I use Twitter as a personal journal to, especially when I'm feeling bad, I will go on Twitter and and put down positive affirmations for myself. Right. Um, and I use it to remind myself what I'm thankful for, what I'm grateful for, and what I want to stay focused on. So anytime I open up Twitter and click my profile, the top 10 messages that I have written in the past day are all there. Yes, and they're all positive. Right, exactly. And then if I share something, what am I sharing? Well, I'm sharing other positive things that match that. Mm -hmm. So I, for instance, do not follow, um, let's say, you know, NFL updates on Twitter. Right. And the reason for that is that's just more information. If I want NFL updates, I can absolutely go get them on Twitter or I can go anywhere else and get them. But I don't want that information on my Twitter. What I want on Twitter is positive affirmations for me to remember. Mm-hmm. I want to be positive when I'm feeling negative. That's another very important thing. Whenever right. I feel negative, I jump on Twitter and I put down something good, something happy, something that I'm thankful for. Mm-hmm. You know, so by doing that, what I hope I'm doing, what I'm attempting to do is just like working out is get in the reps. Right. For this first year that I'm on Twitter, get in the reps of positivity. And then if I happen to increase in following, fine. But if not, I wasn't really there for that in the first place anyway. Right. And if you're looking at, if you look at my personal, uh, Twitter account, which is Hunter Vanguard, uh, I've got, I've, I've, I've got a few followers there. It's like, it's above 1600, something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is where you will see a lot of me personally. Uh, a lot of my opinions, a lot of uh, uh, my thoughts and ideas happen on that Twitter account. Uh, if you look at the Tattooed with Children account, not Tattooed with Children, Tattooed with account. Mm-hmm. That still bothers me. But right. The Tattooed with account, that account tends to be less about me personally mm-hmm. and more about trying to dialogue with interesting people Mm -hmm. so there's not it's not a very big account there's not a very i don't follow all that many and i don't have too many followers Mm -hmm. that is in my intent there is i will follow you at the beginning i was following anybody that followed me because i was trying to just get something going Mm -hmm. now uh if you uh try to engage with me and you're not interesting Mm -hmm. i i pretty much cut that off Mm -hmm. like i'm only i'm trying to have conversations with people that are good conversationalists on Twitter mm-hmm. because that gives me material that I can bring to you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's sort of like my, my lab. Yeah. And it works out very, it's, it's working out very well as far as that's concerned. Right. Like and I don't and, need another follow. And I know we're talking about Twitter right now, but I know for instance, Mike, you use LinkedIn mm-hmm. for more conversations and more things of that nature. That's correct. And I think the idea here is that we're not telling you a way to do it. We're just, we're providing a little background information of how you could do it if you want it. Right. If you, you, you can use link, you could use your LinkedIn the way I'm using Twitter. Right. Or you could use your Facebook the way Ray is using Twitter. In other words, guys, a lot of people will say like, and I'll, I'll say this, like Facebook is bad or they'll say Twitter is bad or they'll say Instagram is bad. And it's really the way that we're using it is not up to snuff. Like, right. I'll, like I'll say that for, uh, completely about me and Facebook. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I just don't know how to use Facebook in such a way mm-hmm. that it doesn't make me feel like shit. Mm-hmm. So I don't use Facebook. Right. Just, so, you, just, so you limit your time there. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's uh, that's actually what we're talking about here with all information is if something makes makes you feel bad, it doesn't mean that inherently it's bad. That's why I went back to the expanse on Amazon, uh, you know, Amazon Prime. Right. Is that that's a fucking great show. It, it's a fantastic show. I don't feel bad because it's a bad show. I feel bad because I'm trying to eat too much of it. Like another example, like one of my shows that I do that with is uh, what's it called? Uh, the Boys. Mm-hmm. the boys on amazon mm-hmm. like that is a that show is fantastic mm-hmm. i can do one episode a day maximum <laughs> it, but yeah it'll it'll fuck you it will fuck your head up mm-hmm. if you watch two episodes you watch mm-hmm. three episodes you may commit suicide yeah and i think that's just an important note but it's the same thing with food we know that mm-hmm. but we don't listen to it there there's nothing wrong with fast food no one is saying you can't go to taco bell and get a nachos bel grande right 
Okay, but if you do that twice a day, every day, there's a good chance you're going to feel terrible at the end of the week. And for my chefs out there who might be listening, hopefully you are listening because I'm into food. If you have, I'm going to say it for you, chef. If you've got a great piece of Wagyu steak, Mm -hmm. you want about four ounces of it. Right. Maximum. Right. If you eat more than that, you're overindulging and you're going to hate yourself and hate everybody else. Right. So don't do that. Just do your four ounces and move on. Right. You know, it's it's like it's, it's not so much that we're talking about moderation here is that we're talking about how we view information. And I think yeah. that gets back to your point of what feeds your soul, because what yes. feeds your soul is. I'm going to argue that there are exercises to do and there are this and that and there are analogies I could make. But quite frankly, I think it is a true statement that information feeds your soul i think that's one of the things that we burn on that like in, in, in other words, that as a human is, is, our, is our fuel yeah yeah we like so, we're so meditation it. might you might feel good about meditation the same way you would feel about working out yeah see that's an action that's that's not an intake right now again and and i'm not i would love to hear some other people's experiences on this but from my perspective that's a good way to look at information it's like you only feel bad when you have too much. In other words, if ex- if exercise is fueled by food, then meditation is fueled by information. I think so. You know, like that's that's a, a, a another way of looking at it, which I kind of yeah. like. And if you and if you're wondering why your heart hurts, I, I I I I would make the argument that either a you're not working out enough. Uh, mm-hmm. working out in quotation marks. Right. If you're if your heart hurts, you're not giving the information time to sift. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or you're intaking the wrong type of information, aka you're eating fast food all the time. Yes, it's either too much or you got the wrong thing coming in. So if you're panicked, the in other words, if a response to any crisis cannot be helped by panic. So if you're panicked, then there is a problem, not with the information, but with the way that you're taking in information. Mm-hmm. Because information, in essence, is just data. Mm-hmm. So it can't be good or bad, mm-hmm. but too much will definitely cause you problems, Right. and too little will also cause you problems. Yeah. So and, just, and- like, just take these things into account. And, like... I, I know we've we've got a lot of issues mm-hmm. in the in the world, uh, I'm, and I'm very pointedly not saying what those issues are because sure. I don't want to add your information. Well, and the and the crazy thing is is that depending on where you live, depending on your your socioeconomic status, depending on your background and your experience, it could be a variety of things. Yes. That's another reason for us not to name names because then we're simply adding to the noise. Yes. Because it could be so many, it could be one of ten things, and you go, well, Ben and Ray, clearly Obviously you're avoiding the one issue. Right. No, guys, we're not. We're not avoiding the one issue. Uh, the three of us have had big conversation on politics lately, and I think both of you were somewhat surprised to hear me say, uh, not, not shocked as in you didn't know. But this honestly hasn't come up in the last year of political riffraff. Right. Jobs matter. Yeah. I, I don't know that anyone gives a flying fuck about health care right now. You go, well, clearly they do. Uh, guys, I got news for you. If you're poor, health care isn't even on the radar. Yeah, you're not, you, you, you're not worried about going to the doctor because you're not sure if you can eat. Yeah, I mean, you just want to you want to pay rent. That right. kind of that, that kind of goes back to the to the basic needs, you know, the the the, the basic human needs, right? Mm-hmm. And and even it, most most religious or spiritual texts will tell you that you can't you can't spiritually connect with somebody who's hungry, right? You can't spiritually connect with somebody who's thirsty, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And this is kind of where the, the the idea of gluttony comes in. What mm-hmm. you're what you're saying is, you know. We 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 have a we have a problem in our country at the physical level uh, with with gluttony, mm-hmm. and and you have to ask yourself where does it come from, mm-hmm. right? Well, the truth of the matter is the type of foods that we eat, mm-hmm. right? In general, I'm not saying specifically us, but the types of food that people eat in general, 
they're not nutritious, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so people end up eating too much, pursuing the fulfillment of that nutrition, Mm -hmm. right? And that that is the traditional, Mm -hmm. you know, I can't stop eating. Mm -hmm. I'm eating too much, too the core of gluttony, too Mm -hmm. much, Mm -hmm. right? In in the same way, we might be consuming um, ridiculous amounts of information, but you have to give the advice, hey, you're going to have to stop consuming so much information, right? right? Because you're literally getting too much, and it's not of a good quality. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think I I you know, whenever I finish a new show, I have that urge to start another new show. Yeah. And and one of my practices has been to rather than start a new show a, a, a you know, another one, uh-huh, is that I'll go back to Naruto for a few days. Yeah. Or I'll watch a couple of uh nature documentaries. Uh huh. But I'll watch them muted with the uh, captions off. Yeah. Meaning I'm just, I want something pretty to look at. I want to see scenery. I want to, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, Morgan Freeman might be narrating. Right. But I don't want to hear his voice and I certainly don't want to read. Why? I've just <laughs> finished a new show. I like that. I don't want to hear his voice because that's going to add to my my thought process. It, like, it, Morgan Freeman has stimulated me in a way that is well. And then, <laughs> well, and then my I have a better solution for you. Okay, right. watch any science show narrated by Mike Rowe. Okay, and you'll be asleep in about thirty seconds. Nice, dude. Mike Rowe's voice that is like a babbling brook. It's <laughs> seriously, man. That's like, the only the only reason like I'm I'm like I wish I had cable or satellite or something is because I could turn on one of the science channels and it's almost guaranteed that there'd be a science show narrated by Mike Rowe. Yeah. Right? And I'd be like, this is Saturday nap time. Right. Go. Yeah. <laughs> it was Mike like Mike like if you guys uh, ever watched the dirty jobs, like right. that, that guy did dirty jobs with Mike Rowe. His his he has that one of the one of those smooth river rock voices. Right. It's like, oh man. Right. I can I can get into that. Uh, what he's talking about? What is it? I can't even concentrate. I'm I'm about to yeah. I'm about to bliss out. Well, and see, that's what the ladies say about me. Except that's not what they say about of, uh, babbling. I did. How did listen, we, okay, it's let's cigarettes put this out. and death. They, they, they put fault. this out right now. I, I I did a poll. <laughs> God damn it! I did a poll of the sexiest voice on this podcast, and I won that poll. I don't. It was. Remember. I was the winner. I don't remember that. All right. Well, <laughs> this, is, this is fake. News. To be fair, when he did that poll, the listening audience was almost like about four people. It was four people. Like okay, and they all knew Ray. Right. So yeah, he. I think that was well, I think poll. more importantly, they all knew Ben. It's like we're, we're not giving him that. Yeah, that we're, we're that, not, that actually did happen. <laughs> we're not. We're not going to give him that ego stroke. All right, guys. Uh, listen, season one of Tattoo with Children was probably one of the greatest experiences of my life. Like season one with, of Tattoo with Children changed me in ways I couldn't have imagined. Uh, it made my uh, per- my present mind clearer, and it made my future mind uh, more hopeful. So I can thank you guys, the listener, for giving me that. And You're so welcome. I'll do that. Thank you all to all my listeners for uh, making uh, my life better. Uh, you and you like and, and you say, well, like, you know, well, I, I didn't give you any in any, any money. Me personally, I said, well, you kind of did. Yeah, because you made me uh, uh, gave me the skill set necessary to get more money. Right. Which is what we're doing, by the way, guys. Like when I say that we're going to be uh, doing better for you, I meant it. You're going to you're going to see the the uh, jump in quality. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But I but I totally agree with you. You know that not and we talk about this a lot at pain points that not all currency is uh, monetary. Money. Yeah, it's not yeah, all money. It's not all money. You know, paper bills are nice, and we all like to have things to put in our bank account. But, uh, you know, there, there are types of currency that are, uh, I don't know, emotional, physical, spiritual, you know, yeah. and, and I think definitely doing this has made me feel better. I've definitely missed it over the past few weeks as we've been working on other projects. Yeah. It's, it's been, it's been like not hard to, not, not, not harsh on me, mm-hmm. but it's one of those things where it's like, man, I really, uh, 
want to go ahead and start the podcast back up again because I know I would feel better about this thing. And I think that's also one of the things that we want to, you know, we need to put a tack in and pin up on the wall or pin up on the, the board and remember is that, you know, I know, Ray, you and I specifically have talked about having more guests because this yeah. this makes us feel better. And we have a sneaky suspicion that it would make other people feel better, too. As nervous as they think they might be uh, to get on a podcast and talk for a few minutes, you know, uh, when we say you're a guest, clearly we are not going to give you the time of fucking day. Right. Ray, Ray and I are going to talk. Yeah, yeah. We're, 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 we're going to. Yeah. It's just like Mike being here talking right now. We right. Not He's doing. just got to shut the fuck up because even his vision looking over at me is just so loud. I don't like it. Yeah. But I do think, getting back seriously, that the reality is that it could help some of you to come on a podcast and just get a load off and just say, you know what? Wow, I've never considered. Because I think that's one of the reasons we're thinking more clearly about business is that we've done this, and so we've had to measure what do I want to record? Yes. What do I want to say to the public? What do I want to be remembered for? And it's helped me clean up a lot of my processes. And I believe that the value to you, the listener, that I can bring is to help you feel a little bit better about your situation, about the world. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, in other words, I'm not trying to fix your problems. I'm not even trying to say what your problems are. Mm Mm-hmm. I just want you to feel a little bit better about whatever it is. Yeah. You know, like I think that is uh, what's kind of needed right now mm-hmm. isn't like you, you don't need solutions. Right. You don't need a rehash of uh, the current event, which is what I did a lot of in season one. Uh, I don't think you need that. What I think you really need from me personally is for me to tell you the truth, which is you're pretty awesome. I like it the way that you are. Right. You know, I, I'm really digging you as a person. Right. And I think I may be one of the few people that will say that every day and mean it every day. Yeah. So, and I think from my perspective, I can honestly say with a lot of conviction that life is long. Yeah. And and that I think, you know, the the, the idea that we're running this race and we've got to get somewhere quick i i just keep running into people who are who are they're done and they haven't even hit 40 yet right and so from my perspective i can say well here's a different way of looking at it and you're not to where i'm at yet and you're done Mm-hmm. And I'm 40. I'm going to turn 41 in a couple of months, and I'm just getting started. Yeah, this is just the beginning. This like, is, I'm looking this is at a long game, years. man. I'm looking at 40 years of tattoo with children, guys. Hope, yeah. you, hope you guys realize that. So, the listener, and, yeah, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to take that idea and run with it a little bit more in season two. Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, guys, uh, you've been listening to Tattoo with Children. I've been your host, Flavor Ray. You can find uh, Tattoo with Children on Instagram at Tattoo with Children. You can find us on Facebook, Tattoo with Children. You can find us on Twitter at Tattooed with. You can find me on Twitter at Hunter Vanguard, and you can also find me on Instagram at Madara Shadow. Please use that account to uh, send me your messages uh, about Tattoo with Children. I will absolutely uh, read those dramatically, uh, a dramatic reading to myself uh, from that account on Instagram. Or from the account on Tattooed With uh, on Twitter. Both of those I follow religiously. You can find Ben, Pirate Ben, on Instagram at Black Crow Brother. And you can find uh, Mike Payne, CL No Pain, at uh, CL Payne. That is uh, Payne spelled P A Y N E, and also at Payne.points. And you can find my producer, Mega Mix, on Instagram at full.moon.children on instagram and i don't think we're ready for your twitter yet so i'm gonna hold that back I'm not, nobody's I'm ready. ready for it yeah like we're, we're, we're not ready for it. we have a whole different thing planned definitely jump over to pain dot points or uh cio pain though yeah. because we've got a lot of stuff coming down the down the pike that you're going to see there first and yep. guys, I did mention that we do we're we're, we're going to be upping our production budget and such as that uh, uh, in season two. That is in the plan, but that is not to say that I do not want your dollars on Patreon because I still do. Okay, I still want those dollars on Patreon. So if you if you do like this stuff, and I do uh, if 
fulfill my promise to you in season two. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna stop asking uh, for uh, that five dollars on Patreon. Somebody's still, gonna pay back for this investment. Exactly, and I'm still, I'm still going to be uh, giving you uh, the uh, content and such on on that. But and we're gonna be increasing a lot of that stuff as well. So, uh, guys, that was season one, and uh, I think it was successful. Absolutely. I think we, we, we can call mm-hmm. that a good one. And I love you. See you. Later. Take it. Travel to the core.